Now, today we will be going through some of the important questions which you might expect in your NEET PG and FMG examinations ahead. These questions have been asked previously as well and would be expected ahead as well. There's a certain axis around which the questions are asked and some of the questions tend to be from the most frequently asked topics. Now, how to arise, arrive at a diagnosis and how to answer the questions and what are the types of questions which are asked. So in this series, the first of the questions I have taken over here, and there's a question from orthopedics, and you have to go through these questions very carefully within a limited time span. And as far as the question is concerned, you can just read it well, a young patient. So the patient is not old, the patient is young. That's a clinical relevance who is sexually active, had subcutaneous inflammatory nodule-like lesions over the elbows and the fingers. So, small joint as well as a large joint involved. His radiograph was taken, which is shown. So, the radiograph is shown, and this is the radiograph which is shown over here. There is no active skin lesion, but there is a positive history of restricted lung disease. So, an association of a young patient who is sexually active with involvement of the small and the large joint and history of restrictive lung disease and the radiograph is also given over here the radiograph of the hand his serum uric acid levels are normal so there is no hyperuricemia most likely diagnosis is now scanning through the options pseudogout osteoarthritis psoriatic arthritis rheumatoid arthritis uh, combining the different clues which were given in the question we will come if you are a good student, you will acutely and in a short period of time come to the right diagnosis. But let's segregate the question. A young patient, cedar gout is usually seen in elderly age group as well as osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis happens to be a disease of the old age. So most likely osteoarthritis would not be an answer option. Psoriatic arthritis. The question says there are no active skin lesions. Usually, psoriatic arthritis, not in all cases, but usually follows the dermatological condition of psoriasis with those uh, plaque-like lesions on the skin, especially on the extensor surface of the limbs. You know that. And the serum uric acid levels are normal. So that rules out gouty arthritis if that would have been an option. But serum uric acid levels are also increased in psoriatic arthritis. But over here, if you see, now have a look at the radiograph. The radiograph characteristically shows an ulnar deviation of the hand. And that ulnar deviation of the hand which is shown over here, over here. So this ulnar deviation of the hand is shown over here. That is a characteristic feature of rheumatoid arthritis, which is the option D. So rheumatoid arthritis, as you are well aware, is usually present in young patients. There might not be much skin lesions associated. The serum uric acid levels would be normal. And the extra articular manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis, like the restrictive lung disease, is very common. So that is important. So you can see the involvement of the smaller joints over here, the ulnar deformity as shown in the radiograph, and this nodular lesions which she says can be involving the metacarpals and the interphalangeal and the other small joints like the wrist joint. In some cases, the elbow may also be involved with the association of early morning stiffness and other associated features. So the most likely combination of these clues over here points to the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. So that is very important. So this is how to arrive at an answer so this question shows a maze-based question and with the clues which point towards the rheumatoid arthritis. Now, second question is from the pediatrics. I have tried to cover the whole range of topics and whole range of subjects over here. Below is the sh figure which shows phocomelia. The drug implicated in causing phocomelia is, and the options given us lithium, retinoic acid, thalidomide, and cisplatin. Now, this is basically a combination of a question from embryology. In embryology, we read teratogenesis, and in pediatrics also, we read those teratogens. And teratogens are some drugs which have got implications on the development of the embryo. 
and the embryo will be born with certain con defects as a result of intake of these drugs. The adaptations can be physical, chemical, and lots many varieties, but over here, it is mostly the drug-induced teratogenesis. As you are well aware, this should be a very easy question for a standard student, and you know lithium leads to development of abstinence enamely of the heart. The retinoic acid or the vitamin analogs over there, the vitamin A analogs, they, what they cause, they cause that DISH syndrome, diffuse interstitial skeletal hyperosteosis. Unlikely that is not here. The focomelia, the absence of the limbs, amelia, the maldevelopment of the limbs, the focomelia, one limb can be affected, two limbs can be affected, all the limbs can be affected, and the abnormal development of the limbs is a result of the thalidomide. Thalidomide was a drug which was previously given for motion sickness, but due to this high incidence of Amelia, Focomelia, the drug was discontinued from the market. But literally, thalidomide has found use in lots of uh, new conditions, and the drug has undergone a renewal for treatment of certain conditions, which I will not take here. So, it is important. Thalidomide is a drug which leads to development of Focomelia and, in severe cases, Amelia. The total absence of limbs, the ability of a student to recognize this deformity, the newborn who is not having the developed limbs as you can see. So that's very Now going to the other question from the medicine. Now the question reads as a 44 year old male has a lesion as shown below. So this is the diagram in which there's a lesion. The lesion in the figure can cause. So we have to focus on the image basically over here and then come to the conclusion. Now if you can see it shows that uh, I would just like to enlarge it and it shows a frontal meningioma. So this is the lesion over here. It shows the frontal meningioma. Now going to the options back. Loss of sight, hearing loss, memory loss, loss of olfaction. This needs a detailed surgical knowledge of surgical anatomy of the brain. So you can see that it is usually the frontal lobe and this is the frontal meningioma. The question diagram also shows frontal meningioma and as you are aware this checks your uh, knowledge of topographic anatomy of the brain and the regions which are involved in the brain as the cerebrum is the site of higher functions and you have to remember the different parts of CNS what their relative physiological functions are. Loss of sight. Loss of sight would not be a lesion in the frontal lobe. Loss of sight would be the occipital lobe lesion, in the, especially in the area, area 17, which can cause visual blindness. So, cortical lesions of the occiput can cause occipital blindness or visual loss. So, loss of sight. Loss of sight is not an option which would be correct over here. Hearing loss. The auditory cortex is not located in the frontal lobe. So, the hearing loss second option would also be incorrect as far as the memory loss is concerned the memory loss is usually a function of the hypothalamus the papi circuit and some of the important areas of the central nervous system which are involved in the memory storage of memory whether it is anti uh, recent memory or uh, past memory long term memory the uh, frontal lobe has not much of a role in the memory. So, there will not be loss of sight, there will be loss, not loss of hearing, there will not be memory loss. We are left with the option loss of olfaction and loss of olfaction is the correct answer. Because we have in the frontal lobe on the uh, undersurface of the frontal lobe, we have the olfactory bulb and the olfactory stria. We just go in relation to the prepyriform and periamygdaloid areas which are the centers of olfaction. So, any tumor pressing on the olfactory stria and the olfactory bulb can cause compression of the transmission of signals to the olfactory cortex and there will be loss of olfaction. So the loss of olfaction would be the correct answer. So this is how you arrive at the diagnosis and the correct answer. These questions tend to be very really high yield and asked quite frequently. Moving from uh, medicine we go to the surgery. So you can see the question reads as a patient with migratory thrombophlebitis, very important. So you have this migratory thrombophlebitis, has CT scan finding. So this is the CT scan which is shown over here 
and most likely finding is so just two things the image and migratory thrombophilbites rcc means the renal cell carcinoma pancreatic mass gastric mass metastatic lesions now if you concentrate over here there is this arrow over here which is shown and over here which is shown pointing towards the interior and then this is there this is this arrow over here which is shown pointing again towards the area so this area is over here this area this is the area of the pancreas and as you can see it is a rough it is not a smooth it is not a rounded it is not a circular it is an irregular mass and this irregular mass is basically a pancreatic mass usually and most likely a pancreatic adenocarcinoma and there's a special relation with the pancreatic cancer its association with migratory thrombophilbites so migratory thrombophilbites is a type of phlebites in which a patient gets thrombophilbites at a different places in the body in association with the pancreatic tumor or a pancreatic cancer this association is well known you could have answered this question without and the most most common association of migratory thrombophilbites is with pancreatic cancer it can be sometimes associated with gastric cancer as well but rarely and here there is a substantial evidence to suggest in the form of a scan showing the irregular pancreatic mass so the correct answer is option c b which is the pancreatic mass the rcc tends to be wrong the gastric cancer tends to be wrong metastatic lesions no you do not find metastatic lesions over here the other areas are very free you can see so there is nothing like a metastatic lesion now another question from medicine a 65 year old male has features as shown in the figure the most likely site of lesion is so i would just like to enlarge this lesion uh, uh, this figure mask-like expressionless facies one stiff shuffling gait two pill rolling tremor of the hand and bent posture you can see so these are the three important lesions uh, four important uh, clues given to you so mask-like facies in which a, a person is not able to express his face looks expressionless which is called as the mask-like facies with saliva sometimes drooling from the corner of the mouth short shuffling gates he takes small steps and pill rolling tremor of the hand pill rolling tremor of the hand that's important resting tremor not action tremor and bent posture now what are the options uh, it does not test you tell you what is the diagnosis it tells you the pathophysiology the area likely involved whether the area is the vermis whether the area is the lentiform nucleus substantia nigra inferior colliculus if you have read this uh, part well as far as pathology is concerned as far as medicine is concerned you will be knowing that the this is parkinsonism this is parkinsonism and parkinsonism has got these characteristic features like mass facies pill rolling tremor and drooling of the saliva in addition to uh, short shuffling gates and it is due to a lesion in the nucleus which is the substantia nigra substantia nigra because it's a bluish or a dark bluish substance seen in the midbrain level a well-defined nucleus and vermis option number one vermis would cause ataxia vermis is a part of the cerebellum and that would simply cause ataxia so vermis is not an option lentifural lentiform nucleus is a part of the basal ganglia that is also concerned with movements but not pill rolling tremors and the likely uh, set of conditions which are shown in the figure substantia nigra yeah inferior colliculus is something concerned with other pathways just like the hearing pathway so there is no role of inferior colliculus over here this means that you have to know the importance of the nuclei various nuclei of the uh, brain the brain stem uh, red nucleus all those things the caudate nucleus and other nucleus uh, so we have to remember the pathophysiology in a manner uh, which is conceptual so this is something which you have to remember the correct answer over here substantia nigra you have to go to the through full flow of the standard textbooks only then you can just arrive at the diagnosis of these conceptual uh, questions so this is how you prepare this is how you read and this is how you solve the questions so i wish you best of luck and thanks for watching this small short lecture thanks a lot